my favorite way to make cornmeal pudding. This is as delicious as it is simple. This technique guarantees that your cornmeal pudding would be nice and soft and taste great every single time and we won't be using any flour. Let's start with some dried coconut. I already got these out of the shell, cut them up and wash them. The flavor of fresh dried coconut is much better than the canned stuff. But the canned coconut is fine too, especially if you don't have the time to process this. After blending and milking, I got probably 5 cups of coconut milk. So for the liquid for my cornmeal pudding, I want a saucepan and I'm going to put 4 cups of coconut milk in that. This could be a combination of whole cow's milk, condensed milk and coconut milk for extra richness but you just need 4 cups of liquid for this recipe. Next, add a stick of butter to the coconut milk. This is half pound brown sugar. G sugar is okay too. Next, I'm going to spice this up with some cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon powder is good, but I will be heating this up so the sticks work really well. Vanilla. Two tablespoons should be good. Star anise. This is a spice I really love. It works well for a lot of both sweet and savory foods. A subtle, almost unnoticeable star anise flavor can transform your recipes. I also need a bit of salt to help bring out the flavors. This is almond extract. And I also need a bit of rose water. I'm very conservative with these. And finally nutmeg. I'm going to grate in about a teaspoon. You can really get creative with the spices you add at this stage. Leave out the ones you don't like or sub it with a spice you really love. I'm giving this a little mix. This is going on low heat to come up to a simmer. I want to slowly release the flavors from the spice as this heats up. I don't want a rolling boil for this. Perfect. While that's doing its thing, let's get the cornmeal ready. For that, I need a medium sized bowl. I probably could eyeball it, but for consistency, let's weigh out the cornmeal. I want one pound of cornmeal. This is refined cornmeal, by the way. You want a fine grind for a smoother textured pudding. But that's not to say a more coarse ground won't work. If you want a little bit rougher texture, you can absolutely use coarse cornmeal. I also have some grated coconut. Shreds of coconut taste delicious and adds variety to the texture of the pudding. It's optional of course. I'm going to mix this with the hot liquid, but before that, let's line and grease the baking tin. I like to use the baking tin as a guide to get the size of the grease paper. A sharp knife does the trick. If your pan has a little overhang like this one, the grease paper will be slightly bigger and that's actually ideal. Next, I want a fairly long piece of grease paper to line the sides. Just use the height of the pan as a rough guide. This will be a bit too long but it's better to have it long and overlap than have it too short. First, grease the pan completely. I'm using chill butter to make this easier. Placing the sides first, the butter helps the grease paper to stick to the sides.
I like to grease again so the grease paper lays flush with the pan. That slightly bigger circle ensures the bottom is completely covered with a little bit of overhang that will overlap the side grease paper. A little butter helps to make that snug. Alright, let's check back in on the coconut liquid. This is the benefit of making cornmeal pudding like this. You can taste the liquid and adjust things like the flavors and the sweetness to your liking. That needs a little more salt. As long as this liquid tastes good, you can be sure your cornmeal pudding will be just as delicious. Yeah, I'm extra clumsy today. I'm just making sure I'm not only tasting the butter on top of the liquid. Nice, that's perfectly spiced, sweetness is good and the flavors are well balanced. This can take as little as 5 minutes but I have star anise and cinnamon sticks in this so I'm giving it maybe 15 minutes total to really release all those flavors. That smell good. Next I'm going to add the liquid to the cornmeal. A strainer helps remove the bigger stuff like the star anise and cinnamon and maybe bits of nutmeg that were too big. When I was first making this I thought that the cornmeal would form dry clumps. Usually you mix the cornmeal with a bit of cold water for easy dispersal. But that doesn't seem to happen with this. As long as I give it a proper mix it's good. It takes a little while for the cornmeal to hydrate properly. As long as I mix it properly this should be okay. You can reduce the amount of cornmeal to change the texture of the pudding. This will probably end up nice and solid but still soft throughout. But if you want it much softer, you can use two thirds or even half pound of cornmeal. I probably don't need to mix this as much but I'm making sure I don't end up with any dry bits of cornmeal. Over mixing is not really a problem here. I'm going to grab my baking tin and pour this out. A little shake helps to get rid of any air pockets that are hiding. That's good. Now I'm going to place this in the oven that has been preheated to 350 degrees. While that's doing its thing, let's make the coconut custard for the top. This is the extra coconut milk from before. It's about a cup. I'm going to add a bit of salt. A big splash of rum to give this a little extra something. A bit of vanilla. You could spice this up with whatever you like but I like to keep it a bit simpler than the pudding itself. This is condensed milk. This adds a bit of sweetness and richness to the custard. Growing up, I always enjoy the custard on top the most. Sometimes even eating just the top half of the cornmeal pudding. But with this recipe, I want a cornmeal pudding where I can enjoy everything. I'm going to place this on the fire to reduce a bit and get a bit thicker. Looking back, this isn't entirely necessary. This has been going for about 45 minutes and it's mostly solid now. Go ahead and pour over the coconut milk. This actually boiled over because I got a bit distracted. At this thickness, this will take a total of about 90 minutes to bake completely. So about an inch of the coconut milk will probably be good.
It's the 90 minute mark and that custard has reduced quite a bit. But I really like a bit of color on top so I'm going to crank the oven up to 400 degrees and let it brown a bit. Nice, I really like the brown custard top. It's formed a skin that should be really delicious. I enjoy most puddings hot or warm but this might be a bit hard to get out of the pan so I'm going to let it cool down before trying to get it out. Yeah, that's real sexy. I'll give it half an hour. This is not all the way cool but I think I can get it out. Nice. This turned out really well. I love the smell of this. The spices are spicing. This is giving some warm homey vibes. Let's have a look at what's going on on the insides. It's still pretty warm. nice that cornmeal pudding is evenly cooked and still really soft and it's loaded with coconut bits i really wanted a much thicker custard layer i could have added a lot more coconut milk maybe half cup more and not let it dehydrate as much let's give this a taste first though this will get a bit harder as it cools and much harder if you refrigerate it so you could cut the amount of cornmeal in half if you want to keep this for a few days I think I'm in love. I never really like caramel pudding as much as every other pudding. Yeah, that's delicious. But we already knew that because we adjusted the taste of the liquid in the beginning to get exactly what we wanted. Now it's more about enjoying the textures and taste together. Thanks again Scott for watching, I really enjoy making these videos. If you enjoy watching them, consider subscribing. Check the links down below in the description for ways to support the channel. And since you're here already, check out one of these videos that YouTube think you will enjoy. Catch you in the next one.